Terrence, now you telling me about hip hop. Okay. I'm, um, what, Estrella uh, wants to know the signs. Uh, we're going to get to the signs, yeah. Estrella. We're going to get to the signs. I got it down for you, girl. I would never leave you hanging like that. Um, uh, the hip hop. Tell me, how how did you get your hands into that? I know you said you was in it for 15 years, so you must got some, you know, names and all that. Not that we want them. No, I want but, them. Oh, no, because I know, because I've been here with something for the last 15 years. I want confirmation. I'm getting yeah. text messages. I, I want to oh, know. Man, she's getting text I got a messages. list of names that I got to oh, ask. Oh, no. There's no. There's one person at the top of my list I want to ask. I've been here since that's, 95, 96. Oh that's Diddy, right? Terrence, Diddy. That's Diddy. Diddy's Terrence, number one on my list. Terrence, I did not put them up to this. This is their own doing, and you can respond however you. Hey, see. it's been going. It's been it's been in the news. It's been rumored for fifteen years. Dog on it. I want to know. <laughs> well, I'm gonna give the floor to Terrence. Terrence, what's going on in the hip hop world? Please and tell me. And don't tell me I better buy the book either. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, that's the way. That's the way, Terrence. Make them spend that money. <laughs> Make them buy it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buy the book. <laughs> All right, Terrence, it, the floor is yours. Go ahead and say what you got to say. Well, wow. Um, but I came. Like I said, I I came into the business struggling with my sexuality because I, mean, I always wanted to work in the entertainment industry. So my first job, actually, I was an intern at CNN, and then after that, I went on to work at the Apollo. Then I went to work with Spike Lee. Okay. And it was while I was working with with Spike, um, a producer on the film, you know, he was a B-boy. He had his, his New York City hat on and his Timberlands, you know, his jeans. You know, he was just like, oh, you should come hang out with me. And I was like, okay. You know, because I, I was young at the time. I was 22, 23, fresh out of college, you know, new to the industry, new to New York. I didn't know anything. You know, I was living in Queensbridge. I thought Queensbridge was okay. a neighborhood. Didn't know it was the largest housing project in New York City. <laughs> so um, I went to go hang out with him. And when I got there, it was nothing but guys there. And I was like, okay, this is different. But they all, but it was interesting because they all looked like me. They all you know, had on their fitted hats. They all had on their Timberlands. They all were just dressed like regular dudes. And I was like, okay. And then once I started hanging out with them more and more, I got like, okay, I've been invited into this circle. And it just so happened, one of the guys who was a part of that circle happened to be an R&B singer. And he was a songwriter. He used to write for Changing Faces, SWV. Wow. Everybody, Tony Braxton, like anybody who was big at that time, he was, he was a songwriter for them. And he was on, and then one day I remember, you know, I, got, I talk about it in the book, but one day um, I woke up in the morning, I turned on BET, and I saw his video, and I was just blown away because I was just like, I hang with that dude all the time, and I go to the club with him. I, I've seen him pick up dudes, and here he is, he on this big fur coat with <laughs> chains all around, platinum chains, and he in the video, you know, rock. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like... He's not even like that. He's like the biggest bottom I know. But oh, my. It, it, <laughs> wow. Um, so, but it was just, it opened my eyes to like, okay, there are people who look like me that are part of this industry. And, you know, they just introduced me to so more and more men. Um, I mean, it was, uh, at that time, that's when the boy groups were out. A lot of boy groups were out. And okay. I remember... At that time, at least one or two members of those boy groups was gay. Everybody, that was just a known fact in the industry. What? Is that Rasby? <laughs> <laughs> that was before Rasby. And this was like Neck, Jagged oh, Edge, oh, okay. and, you know, in, right. you, do, Intro. And all so now down. you're talking about African-American Hold on. I need a pen. Um, you know, me, me, and Fox o, me and Fox over here looking at each other, brainstorming, and like, okay, <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, who wrote for Changing Faces? Who didn't even know that wrote for all of them? I'm trying to think at the top of my head. Is it R. Kelly? <laughs> That's what I thought you were saying. Is that what, not R. Uh, Kelly? He's uh, a young girl. But uh, <laughs> hey, I don't know. I don't know. Wow. I, um, I end up moving. Well, actually, I met a dude while I was in New York. Um, he was signed to a very, very popular rapper turned actor now, mm. who signed to his record label. 
And he and I became very close friends. And I ended up moving to L.A. because I went to, uh, to L.A. to go work on the Keenan Ivory Wayne show. Is he married? And Yes. Mm. He's from Queens. But anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell me LL. Don't tell don't tell me LL. Uh, Come on, son. Don't no, don't. No, 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 no. Mm. Mm. I just got a tear in my eye. If anybody can see it, can we zoom the camera? <laughs> <laughs> it might not be LL. <laughs> he, no, said, be wait, wait, he said, he said, rapper, New York, rapper <laughs> turned actor from Queens, New York. Oh, oh boy. I'm, you know what? Let's, let's move. Let's, I'm going to leave that one alone. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Wow. But I ended up moving to L.A., and I was working on the Q&A Wade show, and so it just so happened my friend, he moved to L.A., and he, the two, we were in two different worlds. I was more part of the television and film world, so I knew more actors and entertainment executives who were um, closeted and who was on the DL. So I hung in those circles. I went to a lot of those DL parties. Once my friend moved to L.A., he was more part of the music scene, so he would invite me to those music industry down-low parties. And when I say that they were wild, like, they were much more, like, we were considered to be nerds and prudes okay. because we didn't party as hard as they did. Okay. Went to their parties. There was drugs everywhere. There was, you know, cocaine on the table, weed, pills, alcohol. And most of the times they ended up turning into sex parties where dudes oh, gee. be in there and you just see a dude walk by you and you see this big slong hitting you in your face coming at you. <laughs> and dudes just walking around naked and having sex. Like it was just wow, so un crazy. it was not un uncommon for them to be in that environment. To Is it because to of the drugs? I think it was the drug because it made them more and un 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 uninhibited into their behaviors and what they wanted to do, okay. you know. And plus, they didn't care what anybody was around it. Because the one time you had to, you had to also miss, remember that we were a part of this exclusive club. It's not like you were like a, a part of a secret society almost, I would mm -hmm. say it like that. Because we, even when I got to L.A., my introduction into the secret society of L.A. was I met a friend of mine who happened to work on the Moesha show. Elton Brandy had Moesha. Mm-hmm. And I hung out with him literally for almost like five months. He would, I would just, it was just he and I hanging out. Cause I had just moved to LA. We were hanging out, you know, he would invite me to go to church with him. Just, he would ask me all these questions like, what do you hang out? Who do you hang out with? And I was like, damn, he asked a lot of questions. And why every time we hang out, it's just you and I, like it's no other people. And then finally one day he called me. He was like, yo, you want to go to this car party? You know? And I was like, all right, cool. And that's when I saw actors and actresses. I was like, I was truly blown away because these are wow. people I knew who were married or had girlfriends, mm -hmm. and I've seen them on television. I, you know, you read about them in the in the magazines, mm -hmm. and they were there with their boyfriends. Or the girls were there with their girlfriends. Wow. That's when I was, got introduced. But I realized the reason why he spent so much time with me one on one for those that period of time is because he was sort of like my sponsor. Mm -hmm. He was sort of like the dude that says. It's okay because I know him. I'm bringing him him into the fold, okay. and he's cool people, and mm -hmm. I know he's not going to go back and say anything. Okay. Wow.